Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and in today's video I wanted to talk about an experience I had today with an EEG. I found an abnormal EEG so I thought I'd go through and talk about it and maybe there's some teaching moments for some new students or even if you're an experienced EEG technologist hopefully you'll find this interesting. So I hook up the e well I try to hook up the EEG. The patient is combative. They're not liking me. Um, so unable to do it. At first I asked if there's any medicines that we could give to the patient that could help help them relax a little bit so I could easily put on the wires. Doctor said that they didn't want the patient sedated. So I said, okay, I'll just go back and try again later at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, I come back and hook up the patient. The patient is more relaxed at this time. I think they had a muscle relaxer in their medication. So I don't know if that did anything, but they didn't have anything crazy that would sedate them so maybe that helped but they were more relaxed and they were allowing me to hook up the EEG so I get all the wires on and I start to run it I'm thinking ah, oh, this is just gonna be a run in the mill EEG probably not gonna see too much but while running the EEG I see these spikes and there's a slow wave after it and it, it doesn't happen too often so I just mark an X on it I'm like maybe that's something but also in the back of my mind, I'm like, she's moving around a little bit. Uh, this is probably maybe some muscle artifact. So let me see if it happens again. And that's a good rule of thumb, I think. If something is just an isolated incident and it only happens one time, eh, I'd probably lean more towards artifact, something that's not a brain signal. Maybe it was just like a muscle spike. So it, it happens a couple more times throughout the EEG. It's just a sharp spike and a slow wave that follows after it and it was most prominent on the left central part of the brain and it had a field so it spread to the other electrodes as well one thing when you're looking to determine if something is an artifact or an epileptic discharge uh, you're going to want to look for a field so does it spread to the other electrodes so if it's a real epileptic discharge it's gonna be most prominent in one electrode but it's also going to spread to the surrounding electrodes as well if it's just a artifact, let's say an electrode pop, let's say the patient uh, turns over and their pillow brushes their head and it touches the electrode and it makes a little spiky wave, that's just an electrode pop. So it wouldn't spread to the other electrodes and it probably wouldn't have the after going slow wave. So after seeing these spike and wave discharges, I wanted to see if there was any clinical symptoms. So I looked at the patient, seeing if there was any I guess hand jerking or any movement, anything corresponding with the time where there was the epileptic spike. And no, I didn't see anything, so it's called subclinical. So there's no outside, I guess, manif manifestation of the epileptic discharge. So no outside movement. Um, the epileptic discharges, they didn't go on runs. It was just single spike and wave, single spike and wave. That was it. And they didn't happen too often. So in the ACNS guidelines, you can actually describe how often they actually happen. Um, in this case, it would be occasional. I described them as occasional left paracentral dominant spike wave discharges. So they happen on the left side of the brain and they only happened occasionally. So I marked maybe like five throughout the EEG and they just happened singularly. There was no runs of spike wave discharges. There was no evolution over time. It was just singular instances of the spike wave discharge. So I was really proud of myself and my reading skills. So I went and told my coworkers, hey, what do you guys think about this? I marked these as X on the EEG so I can go back and look at them later. Talked to my coworkers about it. We all agreed. We looked at the first one and we were like, eh, I don't know. And then I told them I marked more. So we looked at the other ones and we're like, okay, yeah, it spreads to the other electrodes. The after going slow wave is there after the very sharp spike. And we decided that they were in fact epileptic discharges. So I was really happy. My coworkers, a uh, uh, big shout out to them. So if you're an EEG technologist and you're on the newer side of things, don't be afraid to ask your coworkers who have been doing this for five, 10, maybe even 20 years. If you have that type of experience in your lab, you should utilize it. Just mark things that you're suspicious about on the EEG and then talk it over with your coworkers. Uh, collaboration, I think, ends up being the best result. So after that EEG, I texted the doctor what I saw and we went on to do another EEG with a student and I had them run the EEG this time 
and they were looking through the record and they marked something that looked very similar to what I marked on the previous patient, the spike wave discharge, but it was in fact just muscle artifact, but it looked very similar. So I totally understand why they marked it after just seeing that experience. So with the one that was just muscle artifact, it was a muscle spike. There's a little bit of a slow wave, but it didn't spread to the other EEG channels and it was just one isolated incident. So I was confident in saying, yeah, that's just muscle artifact. Uh, one thing you can do to check if something is muscle artifact or in fact epileptic activity is to use a muscle artifact reduction filter that I built. Well, you can't really use what I built yet because I guess it didn't go through the FDA approval process, but I built my own filter so I can remove or reduce muscle activity without affecting epileptic brain activity. So I think it's really cool. My brother was just able to program it it was our goal for the end of 2021 to complete it and we were able to complete it on December 26, 2021. We were able to do it and we looked at different EEGs and we're able to reduce muscle activity without affecting epileptic brain activity. It's, it blows my mind. I've been trying to do this for a long time and I figured it out. So that's gonna be a good tool in the future. Over a year from now, it's gotta get FDA approved, all that. So only I can use it myself, well, just for fun it's not FDA approved yet, but it's like a magical thing where I'm sure you guys have seen people mark muscle artifact as epileptic activity before, but if you could double check your work by re using the muscle artifact reduction software, be like, oh, if it would just go away and be like, oh yeah, that's just muscle. Or if it doesn't go away and the epileptic spike is still there, that would give you better information. Like, oh, this probably is epileptic activity if the muscle artifact remover isn't filtering it out. So that's a pretty amazing tool. I'm really happy how it's come along. Uh, maybe I can show you guys sometime. Yeah, I probably will in one of these videos. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, comment down below. Have you guys ever seen muscle artifact that looks, I guess, similar to epileptic activity? I mean, especially for a new EEG reader, I can see how people can get that mixed up, especially with my experience with the student today I was training. So hey, it's a good, good overall day. I'm so happy that I was able to recognize this pattern on the EEG and tell it to the doctor. So thank you all for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. I gotta get home, guys. I've been in the hospital parking lot for too long. I gotta get home. <laughs> I gotta go to bed, guys. I'll see you all later.